All right, we're good to go. All right, welcome to Romero Records Virtual Cast. Today we have on Matt Vincent. How's it going, man? Good, man. Good. How are you? I'm doing well. So, um, yeah, as I was just telling you, I found you on Instagram. Uh, yeah, I seen your podcast you had with Squat University, and those those people are awesome when it comes to just the knowledge. Uh, yeah, Doctor Aaron, Aaron's a great dude, man. I'm uh, I'm glad that more people are putting out quality information like that. You know. Absolutely. So I guess start off with just giving people like your background, uh, what you've done. I know in your bio, you've got your uh, two time world Highland athlete. So that's, that's pretty crazy. But um, yeah. yeah, fun sport um, to kind of a uh, jack of all trades, only good at a few things. So did a little bit of strongman, a little bit of Highland games, a uh, little bit of uh, powerlifting as well and some weightlifting. And then finally, when I got into serious for the Highland games, um, I was, I, I found it, it was worked really well for me. I was a thrower in college at LSU. And so, uh, took well to the sport. And after two or three years into it, I managed to win a world championship. And then I won a second one in uh, 2014. And then I continued to compete through 2016. So I guess eight or nine total years. And then, um, ended up having a knee go bad on me. Uh, trying to fix it actually uh, after my 2016 season. And that ended up being kind of the end of stuff. So I had nine knee surgeries in about a three year time span. And the final one being a total knee replacement uh, two years ago. Jesus. And so here, now we are here. <laughs> oh my God. So when you, after you had the first one, like, what did you, what did you think about, I guess your performance? Like, did you think that it was going to, dwindle or were you just like well it's just a setback well i mean it was just you never i never really look at it as a dwindle right it's just kind of part of the ride like if you're pushing that hard shit's gonna happen and so you just try to do the best you can with mending it back once it's better um you know i'd, I'd fully planned on that i was just going to rehab uh the next year um, after, uh, after that 2016, so I was going to take a full year off, do the rehab, uh, redo the ACL, get, get, get well with it and then come back to throwing. And, uh, it just never really worked out. I ended up doing four ACLs and like, they just didn't take. So my body just wouldn't really do much with the cadaver tissue. And so here, and so it just kind of chipped away at the joint to the point where chronic pain really set in and it got really bad and really dark for me. And, uh, we we have made our way out, and so things are better. Yeah. So I mean, you said you were training for that marathon. How's uh, yeah, the half marathon. So how's running and all that things? Like, does everything feel okay? It feels okay. <laughs> That's the best word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it feels okay. I mean, and look, I, I, it, it's not like I'm trying to push the running at the same level that I was trying to be good at the Highland Games, right? Like I'm. I'm not going to be the best in the world at running. Yeah. Like I'm just trying to run. So yeah. the, the bar I'm setting for success here is pretty low. Yeah. This was, this was a thing that whenever I was in chronic pain, like I couldn't do it all. Like I couldn't walk up and down stairs anymore and I couldn't like walk up a curb. So the idea of even running at all was something I had just foregone. And now that I'm kind of being able to steal some abilities back, I'm curious to see if I can get better at it. Like if I'm smart and I actually train for it, can I improve at it? And yeah, I can. It's been kind of neat that the same rules still apply, right? Like you just have to continually do the work and keep adjusting so that you're slightly uncomfortable and, and you continually get better at it. Uh, I mean, when I started this run training 11 weeks ago, I hadn't run like a full non-stop mile and so i was probably doing like a 13 or a 14 minute mile um and i ran a 733 the other day oh wow and so like we can get better at this even even on a fake knee and even with this uh really really compromised hip um that i've got but we'll get there right like i'll fix that thing at some point uh <laughs> and then i'll deal with the hip <laughs> they're they're pretty good at fixing hips at this this point so but yep. yeah, I just I'm just curious to know what else what else the machine can do. Like I I'm not chasing max strength anymore. I know what that one is. Like I'm never going to be better than it was, and so that's fine. I don't I don't need to. Like I'm not that addicted to the max strength thing. Like I always wanted to be a better athlete. It wasn't ever really about the poundage on the bar. I never. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, did you 
did you set any kind of goals like for this, like doing the training for the half marathon? Did you, did you have like a time limit? Do you have like a anything? Well, the, the, so the time limit on the event, uh, it's going to be in Bryce Canyon, Utah. So there's about 4,000 feet of elevation gain. And uh, I think the time limit on the event is like seven hours. So I basically have to move at 2.67 miles an hour for the, the allotted time. And I win. And winning for me is not dying and finishing. <laughs> like, like I said, the bar is pretty low. I've never done anything like this, nor have I trained for anything for it. And I'm, I mean, I'm still 235 pounds and a fake knee and almost 40. And so really the intention was I wanted to get, could I get in good enough shape uh, physically as someone who's never run? I've never done any real endurance training. Um, can I be in good enough shape to go enjoy it? Like to actually enjoy the event and enjoy the scenery and not just be trying not to die the whole time. Yeah. I mean, I, I think a lot of people don't really have that kind of mindset. They're like, when I get hurt, I'm hurt and, or, and I'm injured, I'm injured. And, you know, that's, that's it for my career. I mean, we saw things like, um, like Ronda Rousey, like when, right. Ronda, when she lost and I think she had some, I'm not sure how significant, but somewhat significant um, injuries after the fight, it was like her, her mindset changed. And there was, there was a different switch that got flipped, but when you've been on top for so long, things like that happen. So, I mean, I've never been in her spot. I can't say, you know, some people are like, oh, bashing her and everything. But how many of them have been? Those are tough shoes to wear, man. Yeah. Like those are some really tough shoes to wear. And especially like reading Ronda Rousey's book and getting more kind of, you know, her mindset on stuff is, I mean, she operated a lot out of scarcity. And so this, her being the champ meant that no one else was. And then, I mean, her even talking about the Olympic medal and this other girl walking around essentially with her happiness and stuff like that, right? Like, so it, I don't know how much of it was a thing Rhonda was doing for Rhonda versus proving to everyone a thing. Yeah. And one of those is a lot more sustainable. You, you have to, you have to give a shit, right? And so once that crowd turned on her so quickly, yeah, I think I think it just took the wind out of her steam. I think she's like, "What the fuck am I doing this for?" Then, yeah. And as soon as as soon as that turned, like, dude, go get paid. Good work. Go to the WWE. Do your thing. Yeah, I mean, she she's an athlete. Period. Like incredible. No, no matter what she's going to do, if it's something athletic, I think she could do it. And, and and look, if you don't have to get punched in the face to earn a paycheck, I recommend stop. <laughs> True. That's and she's got better options. Absolutely. And I, I think that there are many athletes out there who, you know, they, they get setbacks. Like recently we saw, I don't know if you fall NFL much, but Alex Smith, he had that major knee injury and then he came back and it's tough, man. Yeah. I mean, some people I mean, go ahead. Yeah. Some, some people have it, man. Some people just are more robust for whatever reason or just less prone to injury. And, you know, I think that's even, more part of it right like anytime you hear like oh you know this 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 athlete we could have seen but injury did this and i always now kind of look at it differently of like well but that's part of the gig like you don't get to be the best guy unless you're also wildly robust and don't get hurt yeah you know it's nothing magic it's it's quite a bit of luck in there too to to kind of navigate those waters and never end up with an injury absolutely you know or a major one and then the guys that can fight through it, man, and good on them. Yeah, for sure. I, I, is there any kind of like different techniques you use? Like, I know a lot of people are, I think they're starting to do like cupping and cryotherapy and stuff like I, that. I do everything. <laughs> <laughs> man, I, I do. If there's anything possibly that can make my body feel better, I'm doing it. Like I have a sauna. I've had a cold bath. I, uh, I have someone, I try to get massage work done once or twice a week. Uh, I go see a chiropractor on a pretty regular basis. I spend quite a ton of my own time doing mobility. I run a power dot on a regular basis. Mm. Um, I sleep uh, with a thing on my bed that generate, keeps my bed cold uh, from chilly sleep so that I, I sleep deeper. Like if there's anything I can do that makes this machine run better at this point, like I'm trying. Yeah. So 
I don't, I, whatever, whatever can possibly make it run better. I'm willing to try. So like, there's nothing, there's nothing on the table, like cupping that I wouldn't go for. Yeah. I mean, I, th- I think those things are undervalued in people's, in people's training, even, um, some of the like posts I've seen from physical therapists online, they just talk about how important it is for people to do that prehab instead of, you know, is important. Rehab is important, but also like the prehab, like, are you taking the appropriate measures like before you work out to make sure that your body is ready to go? Yeah, of course. Right. I mean, look at the way we treat any, you know, any high performance machine, right? Like we don't just pull it out of the, pull it out of the bag or pull the cover off of the car and then just hammer it at full speed. You know, it gets a warm up lap. The mechanics go through it. They check the systems. They do all that. Like, why should you treat yours any different if you want it to perform at top end for a long time? Now, if you want to run it really hard until the machine just gives up, there's other routes to go. But if, if you really want it to operate at, at a high end for a long time, you have to be smart about those things. Absolutely. So, and father time always wins. I mean, you can get away with it for so long. And the next thing you know that, fuck, I can't do shit without 45 minutes of rolling around on the ground. Yeah. So, I mean, is there, is there something that you felt like, um, you've learned when it comes to uh, doing certain things. So with the, with the Highland games, you're doing all these different kind of movements. Is there mm-hmm. like a, a specific routine that you found like, Oh, I like to do um, shoulder presses before I, you know, put anything over my head or, you know, is there any kind of special things that you found? Yeah. I had a, I had a couple different shoulder warm up, uh, I guess modalities I would do. Um, you know, four way shoulders with a band and then a bunch of face pulls usually to kind of get a pre fatigue in the upper, upper back. And then if I was pressing overhead, um, I prefer to press neutral grip as it doesn't stress my shoulder out as much. And so I would do all those type of things and the same for the hip and same for glutes and everything else, trying to activate and get things going. That's a term I haven't, I don't think I've ever heard pre fatigue. I like that. (laughs) Yeah. Just kind of get a ton of blood flow into that, that muscle and joint area before you start. Because I mean, if you're already there, right, and one of if if say one of the goals for the day is hypertrophy, you know, pre fatigue on a really lighter weight, and then once you get in, you don't have to do as many with the big heavy one that'll stress the joint. Yeah. So how how I guess um, strenuous is your is your pre like workout? Is it like your warm up? How is that? Like a two. Like a two. Like mm-hmm. a two to three. Okay. Like I want to break a sweat, right? Like so now. So now if I go into the gym and, and granted I'm training to run currently, like I'll basically get in the gym and I'll walk for, for five or 10 minutes on the treadmill and then usually run the remainder of that mile. And that's kind of my general warm up. And then I follow that up with uh, five plus minutes of usually just a sled drag backwards um, and then some other knees over toes stuff to get the knees going. And then from there I'll train. Okay. Do you, do you, do you have any like certain weaknesses that you like to work on? Like for me, I think my hammies aren't as good as my quad. So I like, I love doing hammy swings first. Is there yeah. Something- my, my right leg in general is pretty, pretty shitty. <laughs> so, uh, trying to get hamstring work done uh, the best I can now. And uh, now that I've got a good leg curl, leg extension, I'm just trying to hammer some volume back into them. And then the same with the, you know, if I can go cycle or anything like that, uh, so it gets a little tricky because my, my hip's in bad shape, so I can't do a ton there. So it, it's, trick to, it's tricky to, you know, uh, stimulate the quad but not aggravate the hip. Mm. Um, so squatting, like, I really can't do, but the belt squat's great. Okay. Because I can sit so far ridiculously back into an unreasonable position that, you know, takes the shear force off my hips. Mm. Um, that and the range of motion in my right knee is not great anymore. So it is what it is trying to make the most as I can with what we got's left. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, are you, are you strictly doing, um, I guess, quote unquote, bodybuilding style workouts with your, um, with your, like your running and mobility stuff or is uh, it there- right now, right now. So everything right now is based on whatever's going to help the run. So it's more stability drills, more, I need to just, like I need to keep my heart rate at around 150 beats a minute for a long period of time. And so circuit 
just moving around the gym and staying moving and maybe doing some shadow boxing and dragging a sled between here and stuff. So nothing's really heavy, but I need a long workout that can just keep moving right now. And that's, what's going to build the better engine for me going to, to run. Like I'm, I'm not really concerned with the strength training side of it. Uh, if, if it's not going to make me run better. You know what I mean? So like right now, me trying to squat heavy is stupid. It's really counterproductive. It hurts my hip. And then I have a bad run that read later that week. So if it's not making me better at that, I, I'm just not bothering. Um, and then after I get out of this, I'll find a new carrot to chase and, and train accordingly. So we're not trying to serve two things at once, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, do, doing like, you know, if you see a, a bodybuilder going out doing training for half marathons, they're kind of got diminishing returns after a certain period. Of course. Um, so when you were training at your top level for like the Highland games and stuff, I always say, if you're not stealing stuff from other people, then you're not really trying. So like, of course, there's certain people or certain methods that you would like take from to help improve your game. So the training, like actual throwing aspect, I mean, yeah, like there wasn't, so this is probably 2008, 2007, and so there's not nearly as much information out on the internet. So there was like a message board on NASGA, which we would all communicate on and then post videos to each other, which is how I got started on YouTube. Um, just to try to get critique from the other guys who knew how to throw or the guys that I actually threw against. Cause I mean, there's no Highland games, gyms, there's no coaches, there's no any of that. Like there's a couple now like coaches, but I mean, all of us in the, in the pro class, whenever I was doing it, all through by ourselves and trained alone in garages. <laughs> like it's just a different sport in that aspect. There's just not a ton of us. Um, so we all compared notes a lot. Um, I built my program based off of, you know, the years that uh, the stuff I liked from strongman, the stuff I got like with the Olympic weightlifting and stuff like that from college. And then my program also added in the, the, the better powerlifting movements that I think my collegiate program missed out on. So what, I guess would be your favorite out of all the things you did. Highland games. Highland games. Yeah. hundred percent. Okay. And yeah. Well, I, was, I wasn't going to be best in the world at anything else. <laughs> Being best in the world is super fucking cool. By the way, if you ever get a chance, it's, it's really rad. <laughs> so like, did you, so after you win the first one, are you thinking this is now, did it feel like you got the monkey off your back or did it feel like more pressure? To perform. Well, I never, never felt pressure with it, man. Um, it was a sport that I got to do as a hobby, right? Like, like I'm throwing rocks in a fucking field. Like there's, there's not pressure. It's, it's the, it only has to matter to me. And so the mindset for me was always, I just wanted to see how good I could be. Like, I wanted to see how good I was. And I wanted to see how I stacked up against the other, the best people in the world when it counts, not on paper and not, well, I did this or this or, you know, whatever the different variables you want to add in. It mattered to me that I could win when it, when it counted. Um, and so like, that's what I loved was whether or not I perform under pressure. Mm. And so after I won the first one, it was just kind of a bold as shit. Well, we did that. Um, and then, you know, continued to try to win, win more and then took second the following year and then won again and then took two seconds and, that was it. Yeah. You actually kind of remind me of, um, I, I listened to that Joe Rogan and Matt Frazier podcast. Have you yeah. Listened? That reminded me of Matt. Cause I mean, I didn't really keep up with Matt. I just knew he was really good at CrossFit. And then yeah. listening to the podcast, he sounded like a guy that just so happened to be really good at it and trained extremely hard. Yeah, don't don't get me wrong. I love the Highland Games. It's a very fun sport. I love it, but I didn't have anything to prove. Yeah, I was fortunate to get to take part in it. You know, there wasn't there wasn't this big monkey on my back ego of like I need to show everyone I can do this thing. It, it's a it's a silly sport. It's <laughs> tons of fun. Yeah, uh, I love that I got to train really hard for it and take it very very seriously, and it rewarded me with travel and friendship and money and all these other type of things yeah but at the end of the day like it's the highland games world champions not going on my tombstone <laughs> absolutely so but yeah i mean even 
just just listening to to Matt and the way he talked about it, it sounds very similar because it it was like he he realized that some people in the sport kind of made it more political and he was just talking about how the operations of it was going and he was like look I just I just like to do this and right. I, I happen to be good at it and I and I I definitely appreciated that that mindset he it was a very humble mindset and i think yeah he seems he seems to be a really good dude um i I haven't ever crossed paths with him personally so every everything i've ever heard seems to be really nice stuff about him do do you get to i guess share a lot of experiences with people in all different kinds of of sports like i've seen you with jay cutler uh that that podcast and other you know i'm trying Uh, you know um for me like if i'm just gonna stick to highland games i got a pretty small there's like 12 dudes (laughs) it's not a real viable avenue for a business or uh, for, for a brand or, or anything else. Yeah. Um, and so the years I had in powerlifting, I made a lot of great connections there and, and I've maintained friendships and relationships through making content and different stuff I've traveled to and podcast guests and being guests on other people's things and, you know, taking chances to try to get my own stuff out there, like uh, writing for Mark's magazine for the three years that it was, you know, for whenever it was around, like getting a chance to put articles in there and make content and be guest on other people's shows and do everything I can to, to continue to be part of whatever this world is. Um, how'd you start your podcast? What, like, what made you want to do that? I waited way too late. Uh, I'd always wanted to do it. Um, but I would just, there's always, you're not ready. Ah, we're not ready to do that. Like we're not big enough. We're not ready. We're blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, you're just wasting time that you could be getting better at doing the podcast. And so I waited too long and then finally did it and realized I love it. And I like doing the podcast more than I like doing any of the other shit I do. Um, and so I want to pour into it, man. I like that we got to build a studio and have this really cool place to bring people and put content together there. And the, you know, with what we're filming now with, the way the show looks i'm really happy with the overall aesthetic so when you started it did you have an objective like was there certain people you wanted on um not really like i it, it, i wanted to talk to my friends and people that i knew around the industry and people i mean by the time i burned through the people i had friendships with and interesting stories i wanted them to tell like i i'd be pretty deep into it so i mean we're almost 200 episodes or so in now and it's we've had very few people on more than once mm. and and it's been fun it's been really fun Th- this part of it like the doing the zoom stuff i don't care for it's been tough to it's just not as good absolutely i tell people all that all the time like i know people i'm from alabama but i'm living in memphis right now and right on. it's it's <laughs> It's terrible knowing all my friends back home because they'd have to travel all the way here just to do the podcast. Of course. But I'm just like, I want to do one with you, man, but I'd much rather you come here. I know, I know, I know. We And we're trying now, you know, with, you know, building building the studio out and having dope where uh, the, the gym is, you know, we'll fly people in uh, yeah. occasionally. And so that's that's been fun to do. Like we just had Kelly Starrett in and then, you know, um, Flex Lewis and Jay Cutler were on, but I saw them out in Vegas. So we're still traveling too. So you're, you're like actually traveling to the people and uh, mm-hmm. have a podcast with them. Like Mo- We've only done a handful via this way. I've done every other one in person. Oh, okay. That- so I, I travel a lot. Got you. Got you. Yeah. Those in-persons are, they're just different. Cause it's just that connection. Like I, I don't think. Yeah. It's different. You just get the different energy in the room. Yeah. I don't think people just, um, really understand like how how just like the connection with the person just having them in there with you is it makes a big difference and even like the delay like us talking and having a delay that's why i'm just like yeah in person yeah <laughs> I get the chance. is is there a i guess a, a person that you've been trying to get on that you haven't been able to get in touch with or anything like that not really um, you know, and not to say that there aren't some guests I would love to have that, you know, I mean, but the guests, the guests that I, that I want to have that I can't get in touch with are, are fucking crazy people. Like they're, 
like I'd like to have BJ Baldwin on, I'd like to have Tom Segura on. There's there's people from a variety of things that are at a level that I don't quite have a reach to get in get into yet. Yeah. And yeah. so it's it's not like I can't figure out how. It's just I know I don't have the connection to pull it off yet. You yeah. know. So how do you attack that? Like do you just try and find the person like ah, I Yeah, I mean you just keep you just keep working. That's that's how it is, right? Like, I mean, you operate in that world enough. And so, the, you know, the trick is if you're going to get into podcast, make sure you're in the podcast world. So talk to other podcasters and go do other podcast shows. Don't be a podcaster for another universe. Operate as a podcaster. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, making sure you're on other popular shows that, that have the similar message and try to see their audience. And then you never know who you meet through who. Um, you know, that's happened a lot of times and I've gotten a chance to make great friends, uh, through, through podcasting with guys like, um, Jordan shallow, uh, the muscle doc, um, Ben Pakulski, man, numerous, numerous people. Um, I mean, hell, I had stone cold Steve Austin on the show. That was a weird day. Yeah, stone cold <laughs> weird day, dude. Oh my God. So how was that? It was a super weird day. Uh, I was in, uh, in LA doing work um, at meetings and stuff like that, I guess for a week or so with various things. And then uh, he had invited me to be a guest on his podcast. And so I was like, Oh yes, absolutely. So I pull up the place and uh, man, it's fucking weird. Cause it's, it's just stone cold Steve Austin. Like there's no character Thanks. and he just absolutely like, ah, oh, come on in. Just still just let you have it. And I did the show and everything. And then I got a, a call from him later on that day. And he wanted me to come back the next day if I wanted to record an episode with him. And so, yeah, of course, right? Like 12 year old me will be super bummed if I don't go do this. And so going to going to, to hang out with Steve it was great. It was a great afternoon and just pretty surreal, pretty surreal getting a chance to sit there and hang out with someone like that, that, you know, that I've paid that you know, not a ton of it. Look, look, I'm not a, crazy wrestling fan but he's fucking stone cold steve austin like I, i'm very aware of what he did in my childhood <laughs> yeah i mean that that i think era of i think they i think he was in the attitude era yeah he was in with the, the raw nitro wars like they were superstars like that was true wwe i mean that was the rock and and stone cold were both the big the big timers yeah i mean when those kind of people had like huge impacts on people and I, they were just, you know, they're actors and they're athletes and they're icons, you know, like, as you said, the 12 year old, you, <laughs> yeah, it's, that's a brutal job. Yeah. <laughs> brutal job. Like, um, one of the guys killing it right now, uh, Adam Shearer or Braun Stoneman has, you know, I've, I've luckily known him for a handful of years just due to, uh, strongman. So I guess I was doing stuff with strongman whenever he was still doing it and just have, have known each other over the years, kind of still in and out of stuff. And so it's, it's rad to see him take on this whole role and just kill it. But fuck that's work. Yeah. Like that is a job. Like you are, you are grinding. And I, th I think the, the travel is another aspect of it. That's gotta be brutal. Well, that, that is the job. Like yeah. it's the trend, like you can't separate one from the other because like, that's what makes the people who can do the job. If you can't do the travel, then it's not for you. Mm -hmm. And not everyone's up for it, man. Travels, travels a tricky one. Um, I like it. I still do a lot of it. I mean, but you know, I spent probably between the Highland games and my previous job. Like, I mean, I, I would fly 40 plus times a year for about a, for 10 years. Mm. And so you get good at it and it loses its luster. <laughs> I've been on plenty of airplanes. So when, when you have somebody like Stone Cold or whoever on, like, does it make you feel like you have to <laughs> try and calm yourself down and just, you know, and stop being such a fan? Or do you, do you just like, you know, let it fly? Like, uh, I, I typically will acknowledge it. Mm. Yeah. You know, I'll be like, so go ahead and get this out of the way. It's fucking rad that you're Stone Cold Steve Austin, X, Y, and Z. So 12-year-old me needs to go ahead and get that out of the way so I don't have to pretend that I'm being cool about this. Yeah. Um, and then after that, look, guests like that, the beauty of it is, is they're so charismatic and they're so good. You don't have to do much as a host. Mm. Like you're not going to mine something out of that guy that he hasn't told. 
you know, there's not some secret there, right? Your best bet is just let that dude shine hmm. and figure out what gets him going. And I mean, luckily he and I started talking and we got into you know, both growing, you know, he's from Southeast Texas and I grew up in Louisiana. And so tons just of growing up in the South and then, you know, he was a heavy equipment operator. And so we laughed about that from different jobs we had both had and bouncing in clubs and, and other stuff, right? Like there's, there's typically some type of common ground. Yeah. Is, is there like a, I guess a, a, a technique you have when you're, when you're having your podcast guest on, like there's certain questions you like to attack or is it more just like a, a freestyle type conversation kind of like this like i do it freestyle like this i i run it this way i'll do some notes depending on who's coming on and like have a few points of of how i would like to steer the conversation okay but that but that's about it i'm basically just trying to keep the bumpers like on the lanes and bowling got you <laughs> yeah i mean so i think some people they make it out to be more than what it should be in a podcast like uh, so I, I've asked people on my podcast who are like through Zoom. So these people, you know, I don't know who they are. I mean, I know who they are, but like, you know, we're not friends or anything like that. Yeah, sure. And they'll be like, okay, uh, can you send me a list of the questions that you have? And I'm just like, this is not that kind of pod- I'm not like interviewing you. I'm not. No, I know. Yeah, I, I, I don't ever. I don't think I've ever had anyone ask me to submit that. Mm. It's it makes it hard. Like, I would just not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think when you do that, it it gets rid of, I guess the um, authenticity of the podcast itself. Like, but like not everyone has the ability to talk, man. That is true. <laughs> like, not everyone has the ability, and just because people have done amazing things or or you know, have some other freak talent. It doesn't mean it translates over to charisma. Yeah. You know, and being able to hold a conversation and and do any of that. So it's tough. And then, and then I I get it too, that those people will get judged oddly about it. Like, you know, the guy, Alex Honnold, right? Like he's a super freak climber and he's, he's odd (laughs) and he comes across odd in interviews, but at the same time, like, what, what does he need to be normal for? Yeah. He climbs rocks by himself. Like, leave him alone. Yeah. It takes some kind of weird to just do that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Quit expecting him to also be perfectly well-spoken and eloquent. Uh, the perfect example of that is Elon Musk. Yes. Oh, my God. He's a robot. <laughs> He's an alien. <laughs> He's awesome. I, I I love everything about him. Yeah. I find him infinitely fascinating. I wish I could talk to him, but at the same time. I'm <sighs> just, yeah. I just waste his time. <laughs> I would just waste his time. There's nothing. I have no input to give him that's valuable. There's no, I only slow him down by stopping him to say anything. <laughs> right. And so like, that's how he always sounds in interviews to me. It's like, what do, what do I have to go explain to these people again? <laughs> Cause I can't explain what's actually happening. Yeah. So I have, I just have to say we shoot rockets in space and everyone cheers. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, he can't explain that, like, oh, if the human race is like to succeed and, and we have to be interplanetary, otherwise something's going to wipe us out. That's how this works. So the better we do that now, the less chance of extinction. Yeah. <laughs> Elon. The rocket space. Yeah, we're behind him. Just tell us the good stuff, Elon. He's just, he's on a different level. Like some people yeah. used to work hard to get to the best, like you were talking about. Like it feels good being the best at something in the world. Like some people just have that in them. They just- yeah, for, for sure. Right. Like, I mean, that's how the whole spectrum of people work. That's why we have the complete opposite of Elon Musk and people with no fucking ambition that are just lumps of trash. Yeah. And, you know, he's, he's an interesting, interesting creature. Like it, like I'm always amazed at just the variety of the human species. Like we're not terribly consistent on anything. Yeah. <laughs> There's no other animal that acts this way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have to think of like there. There are just some people who like you have to think of. I don't know, like a LeBron James. Like, dude's a freak of an athlete. I mean, he's large and can move. And then there's people who are just like super, like men who are super small, and they don't look like LeBron James or don't oh, right. 
it's hard to say, you know, same species. Like those are <laughs> crazy, right? Yeah, genetics. The genetics the genetic key to us is such an interesting, interesting thing. Um Yeah, we've we've just got some high powered mutants out there. Yeah. Like a guy like LeBron, like just what that guy's physically capable of doing with his body is unreal. Yeah. And and being able to be, you know, some people are like, oh, if I was six foot eight and two hundred something, you wouldn't. I, same thing. Like, no, you, you wouldn't. <laughs> like you're your size and you still can't do great things with your right. size. <laughs> right. you wouldn't. You'd sit on the couch and complain and say, if you had the opportunity that someone else did, you would do better. But the thing is, everyone who has it has made their opportunity. Like, you know, you get a couple of things thrown to you every now and then, but that's it. Like, it's just grind. It's just work. And so those who make it and like, that's something, you know, more and more I see in common with, with some of the, just other people I get to be around. It's like, no one got there easy. Mm. Like if you're not willing to die for it, man, it, you're not welcome in the room. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that kind of mentality is just, it's hard to come by. Like you have, um, God, what's Jocko? Like, have, have you had Jocko on? No, no, but I'm, I'm very familiar. Okay. So Jocko, he's just got that type of mindset that I feel like a lot of people can't even understand it. You know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah. He comes across as an alien. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, shoot. Now I can't think of his name. Um, I, this is going to be terrible, but the guy who's, um, black guy used to be fat and then he was, um, I think he David was David Goggins. Goggins. Yes. Yeah. So, Goggins. Yeah, he's he's another guy. He's another super freak. Different animal. Like being able. But, but at the same time, though, like he developed it. Yeah. Like he wasn't that way. Yeah. Right. So like it's a switch he was able to turn, which to me blows me away that people don't look at something like David Goggins and just get the important part of that message. And the important part is that we have living proof you can change. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like you can change. Look at this. He did. Through sheer determination. Yeah. He did it. And all, all that means is it's possible. Yeah. So there's nothing, there's no reason not to try. Being able to, to turn that switch on like every day is a grind in itself. Of course. Not only just the, you know, the physical grind, but the mental grind of just, Hey, I'm, I'm going to go do this. And it's not even because other people expect me to do it. It's because I expect myself to do it. Right. If you're not doing it for you, it's not sustainable. Yeah. That, that, that outward, I guess, external motivation, like it's just not going to hold. Yeah. That someday you'll win. You'll beat it. So yeah. unless you've got that on fire in your gut, like it's going to win. The laziness will win. That voice will win. The good enough will win. And fuck that noise, man. <laughs> do you, not interested. Do you have like a mental uh, speech in your head? Like when you're when you're struggling through something, do you talk to yourself, or is it just kind of like you you just turn your brain off and just go? Dude, I'm 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 so pumped to be out of pain and able to do any of the things that I'm able to do at this point. I'm just stoked. Mm -hmm. Everything's. I'm just so excited that I get the opportunity. And so I always treat it that way because I'm certain at some point I'm going to die. And so between here and then, I'm curious to see what this machine's capable of doing and what's the rad stuff I can do on this planet. Cause that's all I have. That are the only days left. I don't know how many it is, but until then I'm going to fucking go as hard as possible. Yeah. It's not trying to coast through any of this thing. <laughs> one one of my friends had posted one day talking about how it's it's crazy to think how few people, if not, you know, one percent of people truly meet like their body's limits. Like actually well, actually push themselves to their body's limits. And, you know, we when we work out and we run or we're stuff, a lot of people they go until they feel discomfort. Sure. And there's some people who just go a little bit further than discomfort. 
Yeah. It, and like, I mean, it's one thing in the gym, but it's one thing to apply it to the rest of your life as far as drive and growth and like trying to make the podcast grow or any other, anything else you're doing grow that you just stay on the gas so hard that like create more, just create more, just keep doing it, keep making it, keep figuring out how to get better, keep, keep problem solving. And so like, as soon as you ever feel like you've got it figured out, like you better dump the whole system. Mm start over, figure out, figure out the next thing. Have you ever uh, heard of coach Somner? He does uh, gymnastic bodies. Mm -mm. So gymnastic bodies is, it's a website. I think it's an app as well, but it's a, they've got like a program and coach Somner, I think is in um, Colorado, maybe like, okay. but phenomenal stretch series, uh, mobility series that they have. I would definitely suggest it if you're into that, but okay. When he's – so he'll have, like, these three athletes that he um, does the stretch program with. And when he's talking to them, he's like – he will say some of the most simplest things that just, like, click in your head, like, wow. So one time um, he's talking to them, and he's like um, – he's like, we're all lazy. Your body will only do what you expect it to do. And I was like, wow. Like, that. <laughs> I, never, I never really thought about that, like – you will only, you will literally only do the things that you expect your body to do. Like, if you don't push your body to do something, it's not going to happen. No, it's, yeah, I won't do it on its own. You can't just think it into existence. Like, oh, yeah, I just need to work hard. You have to actually do the work. Like, you have to actually have to work hard to get to that. Yeah, the whole, the whole I'm willing to work hard thing is a very easy sentence to say. Yeah. And it's easy to do for a day. It's easy to, it's just that it doesn't ever stop. Like it's the same people that talk about diet, right? That, that want to lose weight. And the first question is, well, when do I get a cheat meal? Fucking never. <laughs> How about then? Yeah. How about you've had one for the last 34 years? I think you, I think you're good to pump the brakes on a cheat meal for a bit <laughs> and develop a little bit of fucking discipline and, and own your shit. Yeah. Or be honest and say, you don't care. I'm good with either. I just don't want to deal with the middle ground. Don't tell me you want to change and then don't change. Mm. I don't have time for it. So, you know, build some momentum, develop your own little shit, man, and figure out how to go forward, figure out how to stay uncomfortable and stay trying to make little progress. It's, it's not a sprint, but it's a long marathon of just constantly trying to want to get better. Even it's little stuff, right? Like, you know, in that time that you're sitting around just thumbing through your phone, doing bullshit, like, why don't you, pick up a language app, right? You could do a thing. Yeah. It's little stuff like that. But, you know, the time that you're sitting there doing X, Y, and Z, like why not listen to an audio book? Mm. Because there is there, do you have all the information that you possibly need? If not, <laughs> maybe learn some, get some new stuff. Yeah. You know, cause it isn't going to find you. Absolutely. I mean, just the ability to multitask, like if you're cleaning or just driving, like that's when you can, you know, yep. listen podcast listen to an audiobook and just gather information that way right you know and listen to shit you don't normally listen to listen to people that disagree with you yeah i think as far as like politics wise like that's that's something that we as people just really need to understand like you we can develop new ways of thinking by understanding what people who disagree with us think for we, sure we can it's like, oh, I didn't know you thought that way. Well, this is how we should be doing it and stuff like that. Like just just gathering more information and people just knowing more stuff like that helps tremendously. It gets tricky when people believe their side of right uh, was handed down from a deity. Mm. Becomes a little trickier to want art to, to leave well enough alone. Yeah, yeah. You know, if they think that you not doing X is an attack on their world. That's back to the, the scarcity thing that, you know, you can't be happy if someone else is happy. Yeah. You can't both have it, which you can. Everyone, everyone can be happy. Everyone can be successful. Everyone can have love. Yeah. You know, yeah. all those things. I'm in the music industry as well. So it's, it's so weird when I see people who don't have, you know, they have the, this called the, um, the feast and famine mentality. Like, some people have a feast mentality, which is like what you were talking about. Like every, everybody gets to eat, 
Like, yeah. you don't have to worry. Like, there's every- no handouts, but there's plenty of food if you want it. Exactly. Like, if you want it, you can get it. You just got to, you know, open your mouth and say something. And then some people have yep. a lemon mentality where they're like, no, you can't be successful. Only I can be successful. And it's insecurity, that, man. Yeah, that blows my mind. Well, that's that's the insecurity part of the ego that I think is terribly unhelpful for most people. Whereas, you know, dissol- dissolving the ego altogether, I think, is not a great call, you know, great idea. Um, the ego's still pretty valuable. I like to win. I like getting better at stuff. I like success. I like kicking ass. I, you know, I'm competitive, but it's figuring out how to just be competitive versus you and not worried about what anyone else is doing. Yeah. Unless, unless what you're, what you're noticing from other people doing is just making you better. Mm. You know, if you can look at everything constructively and say, Oh shit, look at that move they made or this, this, and this, like, that's really smart. We should figure out how to implement. Yeah. I said like, I'm, I'm a huge advocate for like just taking other people's ideas. Cause I, I think if you're, that's, that's the whole concept of learning. Like what it, what am I not doing? Like, right. Can, can I improve? And then just see what other people are doing and then just build upon that. I, I, it's, it's a, I guess it's a technique and some people just don't have that in their, in their repertoire. Like they, they think that, well, this is the way I've been doing it. And this is the way that, you know, I've, I've gotten here. I've gotten to the success that I currently have because of the way I've been doing it. So I'm just going to keep doing it this way. Well, change is, the best way to improve. Like if you're going to improve in something, you probably need to make some changes. And man, it's scary that people get locked into that thing yeah, and then just grip on so tight that they're the ones killing it. (laughs) (laughs) You, You have to be willing to give some stuff, some leeway and enough to at least listen to like, did this work? Did this not work? Yeah. And not just that latched in so deep that that you just ride it into the ground instead of noticing the little failures along the way and getting a chance to readjust, readjust hmm. like those people that, well, this is what worked 20 years ago and we're going to keep doing it. Can you imagine if that's what you said with like, we always advertise with the newspaper. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Why are you burning money in the back room? Yeah. I mean, look, there's a demographic that's still getting the newspaper, but they're not buying any shit that I sell. Yeah. That's, <laughs> <laughs> you have to change with the times that's it dude it's adapt or die and that's everything and that's training philosophy that's that's everything yeah you gotta fucking adapt i'm i'm a huge um alabama football fan i'm from alabama and um so they had their old strength coach uh, he went to georgia and then alabama picked up i think it was like indiana's strength coach and he like they had two guys, I think, come from Indiana actually, or wherever they came from. But anyways, they had like a different method, like of training, and they were more into you know data uh, collection and figuring out you know what the body, how it reacts, and different. No, it's interesting stuff. Yeah, and, and like their injuries just they didn't go away, but they completely changed. Like Alabama was always ridden with like tons of injuries. And people were saying it, it might have been just the way they were training, like their strength coach he yeah. had them doing the old way. Like Bama was known for having these big guys who were big and strong but couldn't move as fast. But they now had like smaller, more athletic guys who probably were now more flexible and gone through more therapy type things. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I had a previous co- podcast with uh, Tommy Moffat, who's the strength conditioning coach at LSU, and uh, we talked about a lot of that, like them tracking GPS movements and everything through training and knowing, you know, how many plays this guy's good for before he needs to take two plays off the rest because we see power levels drop. All of this, I think that's really interesting data collection to try to optimize your football team, right? Especially because it takes a lot of ego out of like, yo, you're good for too many plays, and then we're like, we can't run – not at full speed every play we can't win that we're too competitive now as a sport and so i I think it's wild that they can do that and get that much information and then be able to actually filter through it in a usable way um no i think i think that's cool man i think that it's cool that we're starting to get more and more data but people get addicted to that too the same way with you know the watches or garments or anything step counters or any other type of shit where you're trying to win the game um, 
or 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 that device now owns you. Like I've seen I've seen people do that who will you know like oh I can't go do that because my whoop score was a little bit too low. Like come on man, fucking toughen it up a little bit, <laughs> just a hair. Yeah, I, I want an Apple Watch, but at the same time I'm hesitant to get it. I'm like, what do I need that for? Like I've- I, look look I I have a Garmin uh, that I use with the run training and cycling and stuff like that. And I I like data. I like getting caloric stuff and heart rate zones and all that type of shit from the training I'm doing. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm only using it to tell me, yes, I'm on track or no, I'm not on track. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to use it to determine what tomorrow is. Mm. Like, Oh, that was a good session. I was able to keep things in this range for that long. Yeah. I think some of the best info you can grab from stuff like that is like your sleep. Like for sure. I know Microsoft came out with like this like band and this was back in like 2000. Ooh, I want to say 2014 or so they came out with like a Microsoft band. They don't even make it anymore, but it tracked your, like you could use an app and it tracked your sleep. No, that was back in 2014, but I know all these other, you know, like the Garmin, the Apple watch stuff like that are doing it now, but just being able to track your sleep, is so helpful and knowing like you know what what your sleep cycle is and when you're getting REM sleep when you in like super deep sleeps and like coming out of it you know those those types of things can truly train uh, change your training and they say people don't change your life man like uh, like like not being not getting good sleep is fucking crazy like that's it's a third of your life and why would you spend a third of your life not doing it as good as possible Mm. Like, so care about getting good sleep. Like, make sure that area of your home is set for it, that it's dark and that it's cold and those type of things and the right type of bed for how your body's beat up or feels or any of those type of things, uh, if that's not everyone's problem. Um, but, yeah, man, sleep's such a big chunk of it. I, I'm, I'm not great at it. Uh, I'm a five- to seven-hour guy a night. Um, but I know when I'm in trouble, and then when I'm in trouble, I sleep more. Um, I mean, but I don't typically use an alarm clock. I just don't sleep much. So I, I really try to make the sleep that I'm going to get really good. Hmm. Do you, have you tried like certain things like melatonin or oh, everything? Yeah. Yeah. There's, like I said, there's, there isn't anything I haven't given a go <laughs> and, and different tools for different jobs. I mean, it depends on how beat up I am. I mean, melatonin's great uh, on it makes a really really great melatonin spray uh that's a super good sleep aid it just won't keep me asleep um also we'll get weird dreams with melatonin uh cannabis has been has been probably the number one for me for for down regulation and being able to get to bed still okay. still like that that's been awesome um cbd as well and then yeah no, nothing else really helps sleep a ton Hmm. Um. So, when you are doing like CBD, are you doing like um? Have you done the drops or like? I, I prefer it in flour. Flour? Yeah, I think the rest of it is junk. So what's flour? So like actual, like so this is CBD. So it just looks like regular wheat. Okay. And so you roll it up, put it in grinder. Oh, smoke okay. it however you would the same way you'd smoke flour it just doesn't have thc in it oh okay so and i find that to be really the only way um i've gotten any benefit from it so either you know from oregon originals is uh who i order from and they now make some delta eight stuff with their unicorn brand and both are awesome and it's full legal i did not know that it came out yep. <laughs> yeah it's the best that's crazy yeah that's the only way plus fucking smoking a joint's great <laughs> it's just, i mean i smoke a ton of thc too but mm. yeah smoking a joint's great it's it seems the vape thing's just i don't care about it <laughs> it was a good gateway to get me started yeah yeah so do you um do do you feel like that has like certain i guess like certain uh health benefits for like different kinds so you know, you're going to do your CBD with THC for, you know, I feel like I'm in pain or you feel like I want to get some sleep. Is there like different ways you like to chop it up? Uh, yeah. So I think set and setting are, are super important for whatever drugs you want to use. Um, 
so THC or cannabis for me, it depends on dosage. Is so it's I'm pretty good with it all day, as far as how I feel. Um, it does some low level uh, get rid of some anxiety as well as keep me uh, my hip and knee feel better all day, and I don't have to take any opiates or take Advil or take any Aleve or anything like that. So I can just yeah, I can stay fucking two percent high all day and feel fine. Um, and then at nighttime, I'll usually smoke more to get ready to go to bed just to, just to start turning the brain off. I don't, I don't slow down great. Mm. I like being busy and thinking like a lunatic. And so yeah. there's some amount where it helps that with, you know, creativity and everything else. And then there's a point where I can just smoke it to sleep. And that's usually what I go for. Oh, okay. Or an edible to help stay asleep because then it works like a time release. Yeah. Is there um, like a specific thing that you think will i guess like help you more than others when it comes to um i guess like the pain or uh relaxation is it just like the cbd thc or i i I think that goes for everyone like everyone's a little bit different i i have found like opiates work uh i just get nervous about the sustainability of it i can't it's not something i can do every day or being addicted Um, yeah ex- exactly right and 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 while i i don't seem to have any issues with it like i mean i got prescribed opiates for a long time over the course of stuff with my knee and it never really became an issue I had a couple times where i got a little like oh these are these are acting differently and i always just took that as a red flag to probably stop hmm. um and then would switch gears back to back to pot but it, it depends on pain levels like if my pain levels are always going to be around like a one to a three weed's great it works fantastically but if i'm at a seven to a nine every day you're like nah mm. like, weed's not the answer you need something else yeah. like, whether that's you know anti-inflammatories mixed with you know opiates or or anti-inflammatory mixed with advil or aleve or any of these other type of things but then you start running into issues with the liver and other stuff over time so so for me um i've experimented with a lot of stuff i get i get a pretty decent um pain reduction from um psilocybin mushrooms Hmm. and so that's been kind of an interesting thing to mess around and microdose with okay um i've really really liked it i will probably continue to do that for oh the foreseeable future um yeah i think it i think it's been wildly beneficial and then even on a bigger dose of of psychedelics or mushrooms um i will get really no pain at all okay which is really kind of a strange, I, I guess not strange responses. I don't know what the response is, but that is one of the responses I get from it is, is I get a full, full reduction in pain to a zero. Dang. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, like I can't go run a race or anything, but in the moment, nothing hurts. Yeah. Well, it's been great talking to you, Matt. Uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Is there any, right on, man. Uh, you want to like tell everybody. So first off, you're uh, you can give everybody like your Instagram, your podcast. Sure. Sure stuff yeah so uh i'm i hate matt vincent on instagram i have the um so podcast and uh hate brand goods is the name of my apparel company if you want to check us out we're at the hate.com i also own a coffee company um habit coffee company and you know, that's at your new habit and you can uh, check that out and get a subscription of coffee sent your way we make we make really good fucking coffee man i'm pretty proud of it so awesome yeah we might have to get some um thank you so much for doing this uh thank you for Thank you for everybody tuning in and we'll see you next time.